buy some food, other items, and I come, come back home figuring out what do I do with all this packaging material. I buy peanut butter, and I have all this other trash. I get the peanut butter. It's got a beautiful plastic jar, soft plastic, has a recycling code on the back. There's a label on it made out of paper, or maybe a plastic-coated paper, or maybe it's made out of plastic, glued with some sort of synthetic glue on that jar. Then there's a lid. Turn that lid, a harder plastic, no recycling code, no idea if it's recyclable. Open the lid. There's a liner, cardboard, with a thin piece of plastic on it. I still cannot see my peanut butter. <laughs> because there's some sort of metal foil, or maybe it's a metalized plastic film that's glued to the top of the jar that I have to peel open to finally get to my peanut butter. <laughs> so I trash the foil, I trash the labels, I try to find some way to reuse the jar, but frankly, this and all these plastic shopping bags were just piling up at a far faster rate than I could ever find anything to do with them. So then I would find some place at home to put them, <laughs> to store all these bags and boxes and foils, until finally I would haul them off for the trash collection. I'm a chemist. I'm actually grateful for all those multi-layered foil packages and plastics. Chemists designed every one of those layers for a specific purpose, to keep out oxygen that makes the food go rancid, or to hold in flavors, or to be grease resistant. I can buy and eat food that is far older and has come from a far greater distance than any human has ever done before. And that plastic is far lighter than glass or metal, so it also saves energy in transporting this food to me from so far away. I can even see how that plastic peanut butter jar started out in nature. Yes, that plastic was once part of nature. I can see the crude oil coming out from underground. I can see how it's separated into lighter and heavier fractions. And then one of those components is heated super hot to break it up into little pieces. And then another process strings those pieces together into a super long chain, longer than anything that was underground. And those chains can be made into a plastic peanut butter jar. Indeed. Looking at the world through the eyes of a chemist can be a weird experience. <laughs> <laughs> so plastics were originally designed to be a more sustainable alternative for things like buttons that were made out of ivory tusks. Their incredible durability was fantastic for something that should last for a long, long time. You know, some of these plastics, you might have to wait till plate tectonic shifts take place to subsume that landfill material deep into the Earth's core, the ultimate recycling center. The original chemist who designed these materials certainly did not have in mind for me to use a plastic bag to carry something for a few minutes and then just throw it away. I just want to buy food. I don't want to buy the trash. I find all the stressful labels and the never-ending trash pile to be ugly and stressful. Why can't I just buy the food and not the packaging? I don't remember my grandparents having to deal with this le level of stress, frankly. When I grew up, I grew up in a place that was too poor to say no to other people's trash. People were, didn't have the time and resources to, to say no to, or to fight waste disposal sites. I realized I needed to start finding a different way of looking at trash. When you look at a recycling code, you might see this. And I see this. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically just crude oil transformed into something entirely different. What I discovered when moving to this new community is that my trash was being taken about an hour away to a poorer community. All those multi-layered blags and plastics, they can't be recycled. In fact, now I know that most recycling codes are just wishful thinking. There's not, even if chemists have come up with a process to actually convert these materials into something of value without just burning them, that doesn't mean there's an economically viable process out there to do that. 
and certainly not one nearby. And even if there is a process nearby, it's far better to, recite, to reuse that material than it is to recycle it. So when you look at this waste management pyramid, you'll notice that recycling is near the bottom, and for good reason. Recycling makes sense for something like my home's metal roof. When after decades of keeping my house dry, it fails, it makes sense to melt it down and create a new roof. But it doesn't make sense to do that for every little greasy foil peanut butter wrapper. I realize we need to find a better way. We need to get rid of recycling entirely. Find a different way to bring what we want, what goods we want, to our, our doors. Then we look at the bottom of the pyramid. This is where everything that can't be recycled and that's not released into our land, air, and water actually goes. So much waste ends up in landfills. And of course, no one with the time and money is going to want that landfill anywhere close to them. So in looking at all this, I thought, and especially in coming here where the landfill is hours away, I realized I had to come up with a way to go focus on the top of this pyramid, the reduce, and the reuse. Find a way to not generate that trash to begin with. Once I started seeing how much trash I bought, I just couldn't stop seeing it. It was everywhere. I had a cloth bag, but even vegetables were covered in petroleum, wrapped in the stuff. How is it going to get around this? First, I bought mesh bags for loose produce. I started making a point of going to our amazing farmer's market. The farmers would even take back my, my egg cartons and my rubber bands to reuse them. I bought a stainless steel mug and ultralight titanium cutlery to bring along. Many coffee shops around the world have refilled my stainless steel mug with no questions. Cloth has replaced paper napkins and paper towels both at work and at home and on trips and now trash no longer accumulated to such an extent every week. I realized I could replace a lot of things with plastic and paper could be replaced with metal and glass. Here are my mesh bags. But how could I reduce all this packaging waste that I keep producing for the food? Could I buy peanut butter without the labels and the lids and the plastic foil, etc.? That question was how I discovered bulk food shopping. <laughs> I bought and weighed and labeled all these beautiful glass jars. I'd take them to stores all around this town and fill them with tea. Or this is my empty peanut butter jar because I eat it so quickly I couldn't get a photo with it full. <laughs> <laughs> I could even find peanut butter without the labels, freshly ground into my jar, and now you didn't need the additives to keep the oil from separating because that peanut butter was in my refrigerator within an hour of grinding it at the store. It really elevated my peanut butter sandwich making at home. <laughs> and now, once I set up all my glass jars in my pantry, I was amazed at how beautiful and calm the space was. Actually, I have to admit, I'd come home from work and sometimes just open the pantry door and <laughs> stare, <laughs> stare. <laughs> no more screaming labels, no more trying to figure out if the, how much rice was in that box. I realized I didn't have to buy the trash to get to the food. I could just have food. So what I discovered is that zero waste practices can bring peace and beauty to your life, even apart from all the other examples. My husband and I managed to reduce our trash loads, so that now we go to the, the county dump once a year with our bag and try to drop off recycling here and there along the way. But frankly, we still have to buy some trash and figure out what to do with it. We can't, we haven't figured out a way to get rid of everything. And so I started thinking about, we have the power to change this. When I think about why is it that I can get this massive abundance of things delivered to me so cheaply from around the world, I think containers. <laughs> you see these special containers, these standardized containers on rail cars going through town. That container can be transferred from that train 
to a ship, to a truck. It can be, everything can be tracked electronically. And at the end, the user isn't trying to figure out what am I going to do with this container, because it's just part of the system that brings things from where they're made to where they're needed. Why can't our entire system be containerized? Why can't these massive shipping containers not be filled with lots of small containers, also in standardized si sizes? So we get the large container ship, and then we fill it with special lightweight containers that are specially designed to keep lettuce fresh, for example, without that plastic film, or insulated for chocolate to not melt on route, or make it airtight so we can fill it with inert gas and thereby keep fried foods fresh for many years. Well, yeah, many years after they come out of the fryer. <laughs> Then when these, contain these small containers arrive at the store, the store might spread out the lettuce for you, or you might just buy the entire container yourself and bring it home, and then throw it into your recycling bin. But now that recycling bin is actually a reuse bin. That collection allows these tiny containers to be recycled and reused, reused over and over and over again. So we can build an economy that is based on the top of that pyramid, the reduce and the reuse, and get around entirely that landfill and recycling piece. Then chemists can focus more on designing materials that you actually want to buy, and we can buy and take home only the things we actually want. Thank you.